Hey guys, so today I'm doing a quick video based off a comment that I saw on one of my videos from, and I apologize if I'm chopping up your name, from Vabehab. Um, so it turns out they were watching my video on how to timestamp your data, which you can see we went through here. Um, and I'll link to that video in this new video as well if you want to take a look at that. But anyways, the question was, how do we take a timestamp that we have in our data set or that we added to our data set? How do we take that and use that to um, input that into the file name when we export out of NIME? So for example, let's say we want to take this weekly pay data that we looked at already. Um, give me one sec. We want to take this weekly pay data and we want to export it to Excel. And in the file name that we export to, who we want the date um, and the timestamp, well, really the date stamp to be included in the file name. And we want it to be dynamic. So every time we run this workflow and we export to Excel, the export has a date stamp uh, specific to when we ran the data. So that's what we're going to walk through in this video. I'll try to keep it quick. Um, I already set it up to save us some time. So I'll just walk you through the concept of how we're going to work through this. So the first thing, again, this is our data set. We've got weekly pay and we want to export this into an Excel file. And we want the Excel file to have the date that we ran this workflow in the, in the uh, file name. So we got to keep in mind, our data isn't here. What we're going to do afterwards is we're going to connect our data to this top section over here. Um, and I have it connected from the previous node. This is just a dummy fill, uh, dummy node. Um, I don't, it's not really doing anything, but I'll show you. I'll connect it to my existing data set. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set up all these nodes. First, a column expression, a top K selector, another column expression, a string to path table row to variable. And finally, we're going to connect that variable to our accelerator. So I'm going to get into conceptually what we're doing in this top section. Now, uh, in the top section, we're going to do the work to create the variable, um, the variable date, as well as the date input into the output file name. So the first step is in this column expression, based off of the previous video, we created a date stamp column which you can see is um, the today function. Then we had another uh, exercise using the today function was today's date plus two days into the future. So really what's important from that previous video is this function. We want the today function because we're going to use that um, in today's video. So after we have that today function, that'll simply output today's date in a new column. After that, the new steps we're going to take in this video is we're going to take our file path. So for example, um, I'm going to want to save to this specific file path. And then at the end of the file path, I'll want the file name attached to it. And the file name I have in this other column, which I'm basically saying, I'm going to name the file daily data export. So what we've got is we want to input the file path. So uh, with forward slashes, like you see here, uh, if you're on a Mac, I don't remember if it's backslashes on Windows, um, but you can play around with that. Anyways, once we've got these two components, the file path, as well as the file name, we can um, execute this column expression. So remember our output we want to see is today's date using the today function, which is part of what makes this dynamic. Then we want the file path named accordingly, and then the file name named accordingly. So we'll go ahead, hold control or command on a Mac, and we'll hit okay to apply the settings and execute. So after that, now our data set looks like the following. We've added in the date stamp, as well as the file path and file name columns. So you can see that we've added this in to every row into our data set. And here we've got 2,624 rows. We don't necessarily need all these rows to run what we're going to run right now. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to cut this entire data set down to one row. It doesn't matter what row we take, we just need to cut it down to one. And we'll do so using the top K selector node. So within the top K selector node, to get down to one row, we'll double click and we'll say under the number of rows section or option, we'll simply change this from the default value I believe is five, we'll change it to be a value of one. So we're gonna say take the top row and then this is the criteria by which we can take that number one row. Remember again, the row doesn't matter, we just wanna knock our data set down to one row and you'll see why next. So we're gonna say, just give me the top row regardless of this criteria. We can apply that. Now we'll look at our output. Now our data set is effectively one row. So the next step is to uh, run this next column expression. And I titled this the concat column expression because what we're gonna do is we're gonna concatenate um, the previous columns we created in the other column expression. So we're gonna concatenate the file path column, the file name column, followed by a space, just to make the uh, output name look clean, followed by the date stamp, followed by the um, .xlsx, because that's how I want my file path and file name to be titled, so it's effectively an Excel file. So when we've got all of these concatenated using the join argument in column expressions, we can go ahead and test what our output looks like by hitting evaluate. And you can see we've got here the file path plus the file name plus the date dot XLSX. So we're going to use this now, um, this output, we're going to convert it into a variable. Once we have that variable, we're going to feed it into our Excel writer and use that variable as an input in our Excel writer. So we'll take a look at that next, right? So we've tested this. We're concatenating all those columns together to form a nice string. We'll apply these settings. So hold command, hit OK to apply the settings and execute all at once. So now we see our final file path is the makeup of our previous three columns, our file path, our file name, and our date stamp columns, right? So we're good to go there. The last step is to take that file path, which is, if you pay attention, it's a string, right? We can't have a file path if, with it being a string. We need to make it a path object. So we'll exit out. We'll use our string to path. And we're going to say the column final file path, convert it to a path, and replace that path in the, in the uh, existing column. So we'll hit OK and execute. We can look at the output of that. And as you can see, now our final file path is an actual path. You can see the P there, it's no longer a string. So we've got a path now that we can convert into a variable in the next step. So we're gonna say table row to variable, and we're gonna convert the final file path into a variable. And then I'll also convert the file name, which is a string into a variable. This is an added benefit we don't need to convert this to execute what we to basically get to what we want which is output the file with a dynamic date in it um, but anyways we'll convert both of these to variables we'll hit ok we'll execute and we'll look at the output of that so you can see our two variables are here this is the path and then this is our file name so we're going to take these two variables and we've got it connected to our flow variable port of our Excel writer. So the last step is to go to our Excel writer and where we typically input the file path and then what name we want in this section here, you can see it's grayed out because now I have it set to be managed by a variable. And to do that, all we've got to do is go to the flow variable section of our Excel writer and then under file selection, set the path variable to the final to the final file path variable that we created so then our final file path will populate under the path option in the accelerator and then lastly for sheet names we're going to say uh, make the sheet name our file name var variable so once we've got that set up we'll go back to the settings tab 
And you can see here at the bottom, it says parameters path and sheet names are controlled by variables. Uh, and as such, you can see this is grayed out. Uh, so then the last step is to simply uh, hit okay, hit up, apply, hit OK and execute. So we should expect to see um, a file titled daily data export 2022 12-29 populate. And that will populate, that will open up because I have this option here to open file after execution. So let me hit OK and execute and let's take a look at that file and what title name we come up with. So now you can see our file is called daily data export 2022-12-9. So we've successfully um, output our file from NIME to Excel with a variable date in the file name. So just to show you guys, you can all, there's also flexibility from the previous video. Um, we could say instead of outputting today's date when we ran the workflow, let's say output yesterday's date. So today's output is based off of yesterday's work, right? So we'll go back to our column expression where we have our today variable or our today function and we create the date stamp and we can simply hit dot minus days like so. And we'll say minus one day. So today minus days one. So instead of giving us the 29th of December, like we previously previously saw, it should give us the 28th of December. So we'll hit evaluate and you can see that does give us the 28th of December. So we'll apply these settings and execute and then we'll rerun this uh, set of nodes. Now we'll again look at our table row to variable and see what does our variable look like now. So now our final file path variable is again the path with the file name except this time the date is dynamic to what we had set it at which is today minus one day aka yesterday the 28th of december so now if we execute we should get another file let me see oh 1228 already exists so i was working on this yesterday trying to get this all set up for you guys i just ran out of recording time so what i'm going to do is I'll say instead of minus one day, let's say minus 11 days. So that'll give us the, no, let's make it minus 12 days to give the 17th. Okay. So we'll hit okay. We'll execute, look at our variables. So now we'll create a file that says 2022-12-17, exit out. Now let's try this one more time. We'll execute the final step. And now we get a file here. You can see that's dated 22-12-17 because in our column expression, we set the logic to be give us today minus 12 days. So that's how you uh, add your uh, date into your output files through NIME. The reason this ends up becoming um, dynamic is because we are basing our date stamp with the today function in col in the column expressions. Um, if we weren't using the today, let's say we simply added um, we simply added the actual date. So we said 2022 dash dash 12 dash 29. In this case, because this is a hard coded you know date in here, it's not a function that gives you a date value. Um, we would have to come in here and change this every day, which is what we're trying to get away from. So by using the today function, we're able to make our date stamp that will be attached to our file name dynamic. So that's all there is to it. Let me know if you have any questions or if you need anything clarified. I tried to breeze or I tried to go through it quick. Um, but just let me know if you need me to clarify anything. And if you have questions for any other video you'd like me to put together, just let me know and I'll do my best to get to it. All right. I'll see you guys on the next video.